Good evening. I'm here with Mr. Drew Hines, the author of Don't Spoil Your Appetite. How you doing, Mr. Hines? I'm fine, Mr. Howard. I have a few questions to ask you. The first question I want to ask you, could you explain to the people who are you and what about you? Uh, if I was going to say who I am, I am the oldest of three. I have Caribbean background. Uh, I love music. I love any kind of art form. I'm athletic. Uh, music and writing has been a passion for me uh, ever since I've known myself. It's, I am passionate about what I do. Everything I do is mostly inspirational, um, whether it's writing or music. Uh, so it's more of inspired from a moral value, you know, from when I was, how I was raised. And I just like to help people. That's basically where everything comes from. That passion comes from helping people. And if you can, name some of the authors that inspired you to sit down and write such a book. I would definitely say Maya Angela with uh, I Know Why Cage Bird Sings, uh, with her poem, Phenomenal Woman. And she definitely inspired me. Uh, as far as uh, when I say inspirational, I think more of the word. I think of uh, yeah, Gordon Parks, uh, King Solomon, you know, with his beloved uh, Shakespeare. Um, those are a few of some of the authors that I've inspired over, over the years. Um, Aristotle also. I love Aristotle's work. He's a great thinker. And these are some things that I use that basically scope my passion when I write. So when you sit down and write, you, are you taking into consideration your feelings about relationship? Could you share a little something with us? If I was going to say, uh, yeah, it's, it's from my own personal experience. Uh, a lot of stuff that, you know, going, growing up is also from my, my environment, um, whether it's watching uh, marriage from the outside or uh, watching it from the inside. And when, you, when you're younger, you usually watch it from the outside. As you get old and you get involved, uh, you start watching from the inside. So I write from all these uh, these values about relationship, also from friends and family who've gone through their stuff. You kind of watch it and learn. You know, a lot of people say, um, do as I, I say and not as I do. But a lot of times we, we learn from just body language and watching, you know. But when you sat down and wrote the novel, Don't Spoil Your Appetite, where did that idea come from? Where did it spring up from? This book was derived from... It was a journal. Honestly, it, it wasn't even intended to be a book. Uh, it was a journal I had. I started writing some thoughts. Usually I have like little thoughts about life and relationship. And I know I had made a lot of mistakes in my life and in relationship. And I was like, maybe if I write some of this stuff down, I won't make the same mistakes again. So I wrote some of these stuff. And I took a lot of these, these notes and I shared it with a friend of mine. And he read it. In fact, he just finished reading, I believe it was a T.D. Jakes book. And he was like, man, this is some good material. This is a book. You need to sit down and organize this and, and, and make it into the book, just, you know? And that's basically what I did. And now we have Don't Spoil Your Appetite, the series. So you, are your book based upon relationship, love affairs, or that people have experienced? Could you share some of that with us? Well, actually, the book is a self-help book. Um, in fact, it's a whole series, Don't Spoil Your Appetite series. Um, and the second book is coming out uh, probably around January. But this particular first book um, has an emphasis on uh, mostly, like you would say, if you was in, in the church, for those who, are, who know God, it would be more like a singles ministry book. Um, for those who are just in the world, in the cardinal sense, it would be more or less like a self-help book. And it talks about communication. Um, the way how I get that point across is basically by telling short stories. Uh, I have poetry in there. I have, you know, question, you know, the Q&A, question and answer. And I also have, um, I also have the recipes, actual recipes for, um, you know, popular dishes, you know, just to whet the appetite. Right, because I noticed in some of your volumes that you wrote, you gave some indications about, about people in their appetites for relationships, male and female, troubles that they have been, been through. And what good sound advice would you give them as they continue to go into marriage or into a relationship? What would you have to say to people that has these type of things that are going on in their life? What would you tell them that they need to do that will help them move their life along the way? I think the best advice we could give them is to, you know, mommies would say, watch and pray. Take your time. There is no rush. And basically, I think if we understand that relationship is more or less communication, and when I say communication, I mean 80% listening and 20% actually talking. A lot of us, we really don't listen. 
uh, whether it's male or female, and we just go on assumption. You know, I think this is what she likes, or I think that's what he likes. And I think if we take more time to actually listen, then we'll actually know, you know, what the person appreciates and what they need. You only can help somebody and give them something what they need if you, if you listen. You know, you don't know if I'm hungry. You don't know if I'm thirsty. You actually got to take time to listen to me. And I think a lot of times in relationship we don't do that. And that's what I try to do through my writings is try to provoke thought to help us to learn how to communicate. I noticed you said communicate. When you sitting down and you come up with a thought that you feel like it can make a difference in someone's life, do you feel like your book, by you writing it with the experience in life that you have, can bring about a change with people? Honestly, I don't think the writings alone can bring about a change. I think one person has to really know who they are and what they want and actually for themselves understand what it is to change. It's it's you acknowledging that you need to change. A lot of us think we're perfect and don't need help. And I think that's the biggest problem. If we gonna see if we can honestly see who we are and what where we at and see that you know what we can do better. That we can always do better. And I think if we can kind of be more submissive and and see what what's wrong with us and try to come up with some plan, whether it's get counseling or uh, whatever it is, to try to better better ourselves. And, and with, the, with, the, with the book here, it is a self-help book, and it tries to help you to give you some ideas of what we can do to, to bring about change. And if you feel like by writing these novels that you continue to write, do you feel that you have some impact on people's life? For the book has several volumes dealing with aspects of relationships. Um, if you look about the the title, it says, Don't Spoil Your Appetite, Recipes for Life, Love, and Happiness. So basically, everything that I've written and everything I've done is to try to, for the betterment of life, relationship. So would you say a recipe is a formula for success, or how would you describe it? Yes, I, I would say it is, a, it is a recipe for success. You have to have a plan. Uh, in the first book, I call it a vision plan. And I think that's basically what we all need to have, have a vision. And once you have a vision, uh, write the vision and make it plain. Well, that is good. Well, I can tell you this. The volumes that I did read in your book have been inspiring to me. So I encourage anybody who's listening to us at this point to really go out, read the book, and make your opinion. And I thank you very much, Mr. Hyde. Yeah, thank, thank you, you Mr. Mr. Howard. Thank Likewise. you. You can really relate to the stories and everything that they say in the book because most people go through these scenarios each and every day. So definitely look into getting this book. It will be worth every penny. Don't spoil your appetite. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I just want to really say that the book has been a blessing. I'm a, a man, a true believer uh, of reading uh, books, uh, whether it be uh, the Bible, whether it be uh, novels or love stories, whatever. But I want to tell you that after reading this book, don't spoil your appetites. Ladies and gentlemen, those who are single, those who are married, or those who are in relationship, I'm encouraging you to go out here and purchase this book. It really enlightened me on the how men think and pretty much how most relationships have the same issues. I think that the book could really be used as a guide to teach us and show us some things that God may be trying to say to us and how we can use these different things in our marriage to make it better and to make it sweeter. So that's another perk about the book. They have wonderful recipes. It comes from breakfast, lunch, you know, they have great desserts, everything like that. So if you want to wine and dine your husband, definitely this is a great book for that as well. I just want to encourage you that once you read this book, you'll never be the same. Don't Spoil Your Appetite is a beautiful blessing from the heart and it allows you to search your soul to find out how love is, to find out what you're missing, what some things you need to add and what you need to keep on doing in order to keep the relationship going. I encourage you, I pray that you will go out and purchase Don't Spoil Your Appetite.